Hello YouTube, so today I'll be making an overview of the must-have Mac apps for the year 2015. So these are some of the applications I use, and I'm sure some of you won't use all of these applications, but these are personally some must-haves that I have within my own personal workflow. So the very first app would probably be Google Chrome. Most of you already know this application, so it's basically Safari, but Google Chrome. It's a different variant. There's different types of modifications you can have to it. You can add ad block, which blocks ads, and there's various different features. Again, I have a video on my channel regarding Google Chrome. Next up would be ScreenFlow. So ScreenFlow allows you to record your screen. It's actually what I'm using right now. ScreenFlow costs $100 in the Mac App Store. It also allows you with some post editing options, including inserting fonts transitions, simple animations, and that sort of thing. An alternative to ScreenFlow would probably be QuickTime. QuickTime is solid, and also MacX Video Converter Pro, which is another alternative. Next up would probably be Pages. Pages allows you to make simple Word documents. So here I have the older version of Pages, which is Pages 09. There's also Pages, the new Pages, and the new Pages should be free with every single new Mac you purchase, but if your Mac is old, then we have this pages as well. There's Keynote, which is basically Microsoft PowerPoint. Again, similar. I have the older version, but most Macs come with the newer version anyways installed. Ne likewise, there's Numbers, which is basically with Microsoft Excel. It allows you to have numbers, graphs, etc. Next up would be Minecraft. Minecraft is just a game. Most of you know the game. I'm not going to be going over this because this is mostly apps. Next up would be Pixelmator. So Pixelmator is your Photoshop alternative, which is free. Uh, actually not free, but it's significantly cheaper than the Photoshop. So I got this personally for $30 when it first came out. It gives you a lot of different options, tools, shapes, colors, everything you want in a simple Photoshop app. You can open Photoshop files and you can also export it as a Photoshop document. You have the option of a PDF, PNG, JPEG, and different ones. Oh, they added GIF. So there's GIFs, etc. Next up would probably be um, Coda2. So Coda2 is an application which allows you to uh, essentially edit websites source code it's specially designed for websites and the cool thing about this is that you can actually just see as you're editing as you're editing your files you can actually see it being changed here so if I do dot 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 you can actually see the dot 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 happening such so as a very neat feature of Coda 2 as it allows you to have like a split screen you can also add different types such as a preview terminal book or something else which is very neat and a nice feature of Coda 2 Next up would be Code Runner. Code Runner essentially allows you to um, write code. Generally speaking, I'd use this for contests because it's very nice, clean, quick. You can select your languages over here. There's C, C Sharp, C, Java, Objective C, and you can add your own texts or plain text, however you want it. The issue with this, and I have a review of it on my channel, is the code indentation. But yeah. Next up would be Parallels Desktop. Parallels Desktop allows you to run different operating systems at once on your Mac. So essentially, you can run any OS you want using this. Here you can see I'm reclaiming my space on Windows, but it allows you to run different operating systems in a small little window without restarting your Mac. An alternative to Parallels Desktop would probably be VirtualBox or VMware Fusion. VirtualBox being free. VMware Fusion is $50, and this one I purchased it for $80. Next up would probably be Skype. Most of you know what Skype is. If it's if you don't, it's pretty much uh, FaceTime and iMessage combined into one. It's fairly popular, and a lot of people use it. My next up would probably be Disk Doctor. So Disk Doctor allows you to analyze your disk, scans your disk, finds space to be freed, you have a nice interface, click next, clean, and you save space. Nice, fast, and easy. It just works. 
Next up uh, would probably be battery diagnostic. So battery diagnostic gives you a nice overview of your battery, including your battery health, battery life. So up here you have a little thing, so right now it's charging. You can see I have 90% of battery capacity, 362 cycles, etc. So it's just a very nice view. And you have information including battery temperature, power usage. So if I take it out, it will say that it's normal, and then eventually the power usage will show up. Next up would probably be free memory. So free memory frees up your memory. So this is inactive memory. It's just a way that OS X works in the sense that it caches frequently used applications. So this free app, just like battery diagnostic, essentially takes out all the inactive memory. So we have free memory here, or we have memory diagnostic here. In memory diagnostic, you can press optimize. And here you can see how it works. It essentially takes all the inactive memory and it puts it here and then it and then the pressure increases and essentially you get rid of the inactive memory. This gives you in turn more RAM to work with and prevents paging which sends and uses memory from your hard drive and if you don't have a solid state drive it's significantly slower because the read and write speeds are much slower on a traditional hard drive. Next up would probably be PowerShot. PowerShot allows you to quickly take screenshots in a really cool way. So here we have a little zoom in thing. Let's just do that. And here we can add arrows here. And we can add text or whatever. So it's just a really neat app. It's very fast, efficient, and just works. That application I believe is free. It may cost $1 depending on the time of purchase. Personally, I got it for free, so it may be different now. Next up uh, would probably be Clear Day. So Clear Day gives you quick weather. So I personally use this a lot. So here is Toronto. You can see the temperature right now and the days of the week and the forecast, including hourly temperatures. And then you have wind precipitation. You also have more information on this app, which can go full screen with very nice application. Um, you have the different um, forecasts with the satellites and everything. So yeah, next up would be GFX card status. So this um, app allows you to switch between graphics cards. So if your Mac supports two different graphics cards, a dedicated card and an integrated, you can switch between them. So you can save battery by using the integrated Intel HD 4000 graphics or Intel Iris Pro, whatever. Or you can switch over to the NVIDIA G4 GT 650M, 760M, what have you. And it allows you to get superior performance. OS X should automatically switch. So if you have OpenGL or running anything demanding, you will, it should switch automatically using dynamic switching. But if not, you can force it to be integrated only. For example, some websites which use Adobe Flash Player will switch over to discrete immediately. So this way you can save battery. Another must-have application would probably be mm, CPU LED. So CPU LED gives you some nice CPU LED lights over here. It's just nice depending on the course. If you launch something, it will show up, etc. That is free along with Handbrake. So Handbrake allows you to compress different videos. You essentially convert it to an MP4 file, but you have different options on the quality of the video, and you can save some serious megabytes or possibly gigabytes as well. Next up for any students would probably be Project Planner. So Project Planner allows you to plan your project, tasks, adding tasks, milestones, day, hour, week, month, hour, etc. with usage, and then it gives you a nice progress report on your project. So that is Project Planner. Alright, next up would probably be Android File Transfer Tool if you have an Android. It allows you to transfer files. Quick, easy, simple. Personal budget, again, it's a really nice thing. So here I have an example. This is my personal budget. So Android Play Store gift card, City Car Driving Simulator. These are just some examples I have here. So this is just a very quick 
program, you can switch between budget and transaction, so you can make your personal finances. It's very simple, so if you have anything major, you still switch over to numbers, which is basically Excel. I covered that already. Monolingual is a really cool app which allows you to delete unused languages. So pretty much what it does is it asks you for all the different languages and it will scan through different apps looking for any sources of different languages that you will never ever use. So probably never ever use those languages. I might use Romanian, okay. And I might use French, English, possibly, Canada. But I'll probably never ever use any of the other languages ever again. So I click remove and then it would remove those languages from the different apps. The first time I did it, I saved around 2 gigs, so that was quite significant. Another app would be MacX YouTube Downloader. So this allows you to download different YouTube videos very quick, very easy. And then another um, cool app from MacX. So this app costs around $20. Another cool app from MacX would be the MacX Video Converter Pro. This gives you everything, so this includes making galleries, adding videos, photos, YouTube, uh, you have webcam, video recorder, screen recorder, etc. So it gives you a lot of power on those terms. Lastly, self-control is another must-have. It allows you to self-control yourself by adding specific websites which you can view. So it helps you concentrate during the exam season if you're a student. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.